This episode is supported by MonsterJoysticks.com. Level up your Raspberry Pi with our all-in-one arcade kit using genuine Sanwa arcade parts. And OneClickPrint.com for your photos on canvas, acrylic, gifts and more. Local craftsmen and global delivery. Hello cave dwellers, welcome to the cave with familiar face and friend of the cave, Stephen Jones has returned. Welcome Stephen. Thank you. Fresh off the success of your successful Checkmate 1500 plus case. Kickstarter yep. and Thank delivery. Yep. It's, it's still ongoing or is it just coming to the end now, that project? Uh, I'm, I'm down. I've got about another 300 cases I'm going to sell. Then we're going to try and wind that one up. And then that's um, it. Yeah, then that's it. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't keep a good Amiga down. And Stephen is exactly that because he returns today with not one but two projects. Yeah. Where do you want to start? Which one do you want to start us off with? I suppose first thing is talk about the case. The case. And everyone's okay. going to say, well, hang on a second, that's ended. What, what, what's your game? <laughs> I, um... So, uh, the new case. Uh, people have been speculating about, will I do another case? Why don't I do another case? And the, the, the original Plus met its objectives. Um, it was designed to hold 1,200, 500, 600, but you could also put in a PC, you can put all kinds of things a in mister. there. A mister. A <laughs> mister, yeah, yeah, that's great. But it, um, and it was to hold all those. And of course that made it bigger than the original case. So I've wanted to do another case. Um, when you say the original case, that being the Amiga 3000. Yes. That it was based on. Yeah. yeah. So I, I've always loved people, the 3000. I mean, I'm even talking about it on the way here. Um, I, I love the 3000, but I wanted to make something that was a bit more closer to the actual physical size, but for specific needs. Um, so um, I am going to be doing a new case. Uh, the new case is purely mini itx i can't hold back anymore i think we need to show people pictures of the case while we yeah. talk about it and we can thank so paul kitchen for these let's bring these renders usual. up from paul yeah. kitchen uh, they are fabulous pictures and just to say from the off this doesn't nullify the original case this doesn't replace it this complements it doesn't yeah. it so it's very specific about what it can hold and it's it's obviously a lot smaller um and, and this had been mentioned about could you do a smaller case and so this is really designed for two key areas, sorry, three key areas. One is to put a mini ITX so you can build a nice PC. Um, it won't take a GPU, so you still would need the big case for that. So it's designed for APUs, which for people who don't know, the graphics is on the actual CPU chip. And they're getting so fast nowadays that they actually make great systems. So it's designed for that. But on top of that, we're having des uh, developed uh, I think you've heard of the Anamiga from Edu Arana. Yes. Yeah. Um, he's doing a custom board where the original one plugged into the back of a 500 case and it was an FPGA and it ran quite nicely. And we're having a mini ITX custom board being designed for this case, although of course it will go in any case that's mini ITX. So this will be the same as the existing Anamiga, just yep. rejigged to fit in this Absolutely case. With all so let, let's just look at the visuals here that we've got, because you've got both white and black renders. Are they yeah. the same oyster yes. white? Yes, as the it'll, it'll, it'll case? follow the same colours. Same colours. And the first thing that I can see, my first observation, is that you've lost a five and a quarter inch yep. drive bay. It's sort of brought the side, the width in. Yep. What about the depth? Is that smaller as well? Uh, the depth is three inches, I think it's two to three inches shorter, so it is shorter because we don't need to use up all that space, mm -hmm. um, which means it is not as deep as the 3000, but then, you know. Yeah, so but there is still space there for a DVD drive if you want yes. to put one in. Yes, so there. I wanted to keep one five and a quarter inch drive bay because they're very flexible. You can put anything you like in them, three and a half inch devices, anything you want. You can still screw, the, the, the actual drive tray is smaller now, but you can screw a solid state drive underneath it mm -hmm. and then put as for example a slot loader or I put a full size five and a quarter drive in there on my and you've retained that A3000-esque power button on the right yes. hand side oh god yeah that's not Gotta going anywhere that's <laughs> not going anywhere yeah and what about the removable user plate that was on the front of the that, that's no case? longer there that's gone yeah because I really this one is trying to get really to make it look almost as close as we can to the 3000 and that was put there for obviously good reason but uh, I don't, unless people talk me out of it, say, can you keep it? Because it kind of spoils, I, I like the flowing like line. The clean lines, yeah. And yeah. if anything, what we are considering doing is on, on the 3000, if you were aware of the 3000, on the side, it had, uh, um, you could plug in your ports and your keyboard down the side. 
there is a potential that I may have a, a, a port there so you can plug in micro SD cards. So right. do it around the right hand side instead of spoiling the line at the front. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to make any comment about your case. <laughs> <laughs> it was an acquired time. <laughs> So the uh, the smaller case here, now in black on this yeah. render, yeah. looks just as nice in black. Is it all built from the same materials? It's, the only difference is it's four inches narrower. Okay. It's exactly the same metal. It's exactly the same uh, front. It's just we've reconfigured the design and the size um, for a different, different market, but it's the same materials. In fact, some of the parts will swap out. So if you over-ordered on your front panels, uh, the drive panels, and you've got spares, it will take them. Hmm. Your desire to make this the size of the original A3000 then, where does that sit? Have you achieved no, that? No, no, it's Is slightly it narrower. It's slightly smaller now. Yeah, it's really funny. <laughs> well, that's an interesting one because I, I've actually, I, I, I've done the, the latest model is done to be all it needs to be. And, and I notice it's about an inch narrower than the 3000, which is not the end of the world. But um, I also note that I can't, well, you only, with the Mini RTX, you only get one PCI slot. And, but they do double width GPUs that are half height, right, which yeah. are quite good, but I don't think you need them. But So I may expand it a little bit to be exactly the size of the 3000, yeah. which will give you a bit more space there for your slot. Um, but uh, yeah, so it may end up being identical widths because mm. it's pretty much the same height. See, I don't, I don't see people buying this specifically no. to create a hardcore no, gaming no. machine. So they're not going to be looking at big no. GPUs, I don't think. So no. I don't think that's going to no. be too much of an issue. Um, out of the box, what systems then would you expect to be able to drop in there? Because I'm assuming you can't put an original Amiga no. board in here. No. no, none of the original Amigas are going to fit this. Okay. Um, so hence why uh, um, mini any min anything that's mini ITX format, anything. So having said that, there is actually a redesigned Amiga motherboard that's Amy ITX. Mm -hmm. That will fit. The uh, Trevor's Tabor card that will fit into it. So anything is mini ITX. And on that subject, as I said, we've got an FPGA board coming that's got a mini ITX mounting frame. Yep. Yep. But also I'm doing a Raspberry Pi fitting kit that has all the ports on the back, which you'll see in this video hopefully. And uh, that's got a kit to go in the mini ITX as well. So it's a only thing that will go in here is something that's the mini ITX full fat. Okay, and it, I, I've got my mister, as you've seen in the other yeah. case. If I wanted to drop that in there, I'm not expecting that yeah. to be out of the box ready to go in. Yeah. But will there be options? Will there be CAD files that we can get hold of if we want to design? I'm more than happy to do the, the metal frame. <clears throat> as you'll probably see with the Pi, there's a metal frame that you screw the Pi into and the adapters yeah. into, and then you screw the metal frame into the ITX. I'm happy to make one of them with an up stand with some cutouts. We we just can't get into the making the cables and the kits, but I'm sure people out there know how to do all that. Yes, and I'll make yeah. it if, if you know we can talk about what kind of whole cutouts you want on the back plate, um, and then we can put them as a, 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 so the metal framework. Everything else, I mean, you could technically still have. I, well, I don't know if you want to put a PSU in there because I like your mouse garage. <laughs> so I don't know if you want to put a PSU in there. But if you want to put a PSU in there, you could if, power if, it if, from that. If you want to buy the patent for the mouse house off of me, you're more than welcome. <laughs> we can talk. We can I'll talk. Should, yeah, well, we'll talk about that later. I'll get, I'll get my friend Alan Sugar. I think he's around here. So I'll get him to. Have and of course, room. the big one, the Vampire V4. Yep. Will that go in there? <clears throat> right. So the Vampire is an interesting one because. Uh, the standalone has, has uh, got ports either side. So again, it comes into the thing, same with the Mister. I'm hoping the Vampire team will do a mini ITX form factor Vampire. A lot of people have been asking for one. Then that will just drop straight in because I think the Vampire is fan absolutely fantastic. Um, so if they do a mini ITX, now if not, then uh, I'm happy to make a, a frame to hold it but I won't be doing the cable kits, so the, the team, maybe people can make their own cable kits. But again, I'm happy to make a frame to hold the thing in place with the ports at the back and then cables to move the other yeah, ports. it's not a big deal, is it's it? Not it's just extending deal. cables out to the back, which are panel mount that yeah. you can just screw into the back of the case. So the answer is, it's a case. It's a case, yeah. yeah. You've, you've shown <laughs> what you can do with the case. Yeah, so um, you've got some experience now under your belt with, yeah, the, with the first case. You yeah. know how to make this happen. What's, what's the plan this time around to bring this to market? We're kickstarting it. Um, there will be uh, there'll be the basic case again. Um, there will also be complete builds. Of the, some of the options will be like, do you want an FPGA-based system complete? Because a lot of people ask me about, I just want to have a complete system and buy it. 
So we're doing an FPGA system. Uh, it's not up with the performance of the Vampire, it's, but it's more around 1,200 performance with AGA. Right, so you, you'll be able to buy from you an off-the-shelf yeah. mini Amiga 3000 or close to original yeah. size Amiga 3000 yeah. with the system in there, yeah. FPGA. And the licenses for the operating system. The licenses for the operating system, so it's all above board, and it will be running at about the speed of a uh, twenty megahertz. Yeah, the FPGA one's going to run about twenty megahertz, twelve hundred speed, that kind of thing. Like an O twenty. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's almost the performance of a three thousand, but with AGA graphics. Mm, which that's be quite, a really it'd be like nice the prototype, idea. Yeah. the original prototype. So off the shelf. So still a few details to iron there's, out there's before we get to the Kickstarter done, yeah, phase. Yeah. But um, this is a, a world exclusive, I think. It are is. we the first to show this? Absolutely. I think we are. Good. I'm looking forward to seeing how this develops. And um, we'll come on to your next project now, which uh, will just require us to set up because we're going to give a demonstration of this. Uh, do you want to introduce it quickly? What's this? What's so, it okay, so it's, one, of the, one of the other things with the new case was um, I, I, I know that a lot of people want FPGA because it's time, as I was trying to explain to Sam, it's very time accurate. But some people just want their, they, they're happy with the word emulation, which I, I hate the way it's a dirty word, <laughs> because the technology is amazing in emulation, and, I, and I, people treat it as a dirty word. So, But the P Raspberry Pi, uh, this is the Pi 4. Now this, I can run a thousand MIPS on this, and put that into some kind of context. I, I recently did a video on the warp board, 060, which is really fast. And this is four to five times faster than that, but it's 35 pound. Yeah. <laughs> so my thinking was, well, what can you do with all this performance? Um, and so that's what we're gonna to come to, which is the concept of Amiga hybrid. The Amiga hybrid or the Ami hybrid, undecided. Well, well yeah, it depends. <laughs> Working time. When you're ready, Mike. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I'm hoping I can use the, the name Amiga Hybrid. Um, we, we're, we're in discussion about that. It's just whether it's the right fit for, for, the, for the brand. But uh, yeah, so um, maybe, if not, it's going to be Amy Hybrid or Amiga Hybrid, one of the two. Good, and it's not a car. He hates it when you call it a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it set up, Steve, and we'll have a look at it in yeah, action. Okay. Fantastic. Many, many years ago, I had a product called uh, Siamese System. And the idea of that was, I mean, this is in the mid-90s, uh, and what it did was it allowed an Amiga and a Windows 95 machine to coexist. And so you'd have a single box um, and your Amiga 1200 would sit here and you'd have a PC in the box, single key, you'd use the Amiga keyboard and mouse, and then everything just worked together. So if you wanted to run a Windows program, you'd have the Windows program shown on screen, flick screen back to the Amiga, the switcher which was built inside would switch across to the Amiga and you can cut and paste text between them, etc, etc. So, so you, what, what was the host system in that case? Were you... There wasn't really a host because there, there was actually a physical Amiga. Right. Then it was actually physical hardware. Um, and then there was a physical PC. So it's a bit like you'd use remote, imagine remote desktop. Mm -hmm. It's kind mm -hmm. of that thing. Remote desktop obviously killed the whole concept. And nowadays we <laughs> have emulators. At the moment, what we're doing is we're doing it with a Linux host. Now we're on, this is on emulation. So you have a Linux host, a 64-bit Linux host run on the Pi, and it runs a customized version, although that's now the default of a uh, product called AmyBerry, which is uh, an Amiga emulator, which has been running for years and is used most for games. So the whole hybrid concept then, the host in this situation is Linux underneath, yeah, we're still but doing it presents Linux. it to you as if it's an yeah. Amiga. Yeah. And then you can dip into Linux yes. applications from within the yes. Amiga. I think the best way to show just us to is, show is to actually just show it. So Absolutely. do you want to give us a right. tour yeah. of the system? So what we've got is an Amiga. When you when you turn it on, it boots straight into this interface. And if, if I want to go in, I've obviously got all my applications. I've got demos. I've got tons of Amiga applications in a directory opus. I've got my audio applications. But already you can see, for example, Audacity, which is a Linux application. Uh, internet, there's all the internet applications that come with uh, Amiga X, but you'll notice down there I've got Chrome. <laughs> That's very strange, seeing Chrome on an Amiga. Exactly. And now the key thing here for most people is this thing called Rabbit Hole. Now this builds on something that was developed for Amiga X on WinUEE on Windows. Um, and basically what it is, it needs the, the emulator to be able to communicate with the Amiga's operating system. And we have a command on, on the Linux version called Host Run. So all these icons you see all day, for anyone who knows about Amigas, it's an iconics, which means it's an icon that executes a script, right. which is an Amiga thing. And then all that happens in is a script that it says host run Chrome. 
and that's as simple as it is. It, it literally does that, so you can, you can go and run it. But I can, I've can. i got, in Rabbit Hole is all my applications I've got set up, you could have more. Yeah. So there's nothing special about no. these packages no, underneath. No, nothing you can just set up your own script to launch any Linux yes. application that yeah. you want. So, um, for example, now um, I, I mentioned earlier, and a lot of people may get upset about me doing this, and there's a really good reason for doing this. So. Say for example, I'm on a programming session, I want to actually do some to work on it, but I want some music in the background. Now, I can play MP3s beautifully, and I love the fact I play MP3s on it, but why would I want to take up all my processing cycles to play MP3s? This is I'm, processing cycles within the Amiga. Within the Amiga yeah, emulation. Yeah. Yeah. Because basically, the Amiga CPU, a little bit technical, the Amiga CPU emulation is pretty much running on one of the cores, and this right. has four. And so the, the things like graphics and sound are shared across the cores. But you obviously only got one CPU core. So if I run Audacious, which then, and now you'll notice there's two, two pointers. One is the Linux pointer, <laughs> yeah, and one is the Amiga pointer. And we're kind of looking into getting rid of, so you only have one. But the different colors helps you know what mode you're in. Sure. So if I click on the, the desktop now, the Linux one disappears and the Linux apps go behind. If I want to bring them back, I press the middle mouse wheel button and it comes back up and I can then do Amiga tab, and I'm tabbing through Linux applications now. If I didn't have that one, I'll be tabbing through Amiga mm -hmm. applications. So we've downloaded some music that I know I won't get a copyright strike for. You've got it all loaded up and ready to go? Yep. Or, yeah, okay, go ahead then. So the reason for doing this is, as I may mention, is that um, the if I run this on the Linux side of things, I just want some music in the background. I'm not using emulation cycles to play the music. Mm -hmm. And so now that's playing, I can just stick that into the background. Now I'm back on Amiga. So now it's not impacting any performance on Amiga. People will say, why don't you play on the Amiga? But then it just slows the Amiga emulation down. So, and I actually want to use this. So uh, I'll give an example of why this is really nice. So if we go into, for example, if I go into one thing I really like, which is Lightwave. Now this is the old 68K version, but you can see it runs really nice. It runs in a 1280 by 1080 I think I've got this set. It's still in 4.3, but if I load up a scene, now if ever, this only means something if you're uh, an Amiga animator. And, the, and in fact, funny thing is, Dimitri, the guy who uh, is doing the emulator, they actually have a lightweight uh, render farm, 68K, and they use pies. In fact, you're doing the rendering. So now you can see, I've got it all switched on, and I can go through. There's all the frames of animation yeah. there, yeah. So I can zoom through and see how nice and smooth. Now you run up on a normal Amiga, it struggles. I mean, I run that on my warp, and it, and it runs nice, but it's just nowhere near this. Rendering on here takes is about four times faster than my warp 60 board, which is no slouch. But so, for example, I've got my cameras. You'll see my cameras here. I've got set up 1920 by 1080. Now, back in the day when this came out, you would never have done that, obviously. But now I'm going to go to options, not options. Let's go to the right one, which is record. And I'm going to set to save this image very quickly to Space Fighters to RAM, continue, and then I'm going to just render one frame, which is about this frame here. So now this, now if you did this, I, I actually run this test on normal megas, and it, 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 trust me, it's nowhere near this fast. <laughs> and so that's now done. It's now saving the RGB data. But now if I now switch over to here and go to RAM, okay, if I click on here, now it's a very simple scene, but you can see. Wow. And yeah. that's just rendered that straight 1920. Now that could be a complete animation. So this is not, I'm not trying to say this is going to be fantastic for you to make a living. No, this is, <laughs> a lot of people grew up love Lightwave. And so to be able to do and bear in mind, Babylon 5 was created with Lightwave. That's the big one everyone thinks of. Everyone talks Babylon about. 5. I won't mention that like season two, it moved up to a studio, <laughs> I won't say that, but I, but I was always proud of that. So, so yes. I can run lots of applications. Now, one, one thing, that, a tiny little thing that I like to point out, is and this, uh, this is a really small thing, but it means uh, quite a lot to me. So if I go to Micro Gold X, and I'm shrink this down just a little bit. Now this is a text editor. If I open up, go into here, and we'll go into S, and I'll open up my startup sequence. This, to, I think it'll only be developed as a, as a developer. I appreciate this. Now that's loaded that up, but, but in on a normal Amiga, you don't have a middle mouse button with a scroll button. Because it's emulation, ah. I got that middle scroll <laughs> button, and, and I know it's a silly little thing, but to, for for a developer, anyone doing something serious, it means you've got that middle scroll, and you get all these nice little things. Yeah, you can it's do just it. instinctive, isn't it? Yeah. You reach for things like that, and when yeah. they don't work on a on an Amiga, it, it reminds you of 
what archaic sort of systems yeah. you're working yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. So it, it's a, it makes a big difference really to your productivity. Does. Yeah. Now, now, I'm now going to kill that concept, and I'm going to show you. One of the things we're trying to do is also have it so you can boot straight into uh, a basic emula a basic system. So when you boot the system, if you want it to, it go bang straight into it. And what we're using for that. If I go to programming. Now, I, I have to get this clear with Francois. Yes, um, Francois Lino. But you can see this goes straight into uh, Amos, and I do want to uh, be able to distribute this with the, the systems. And so we're now straight into Amos Pro. It, I mean, whichever one you want, but uh, let's just load. Uh, let's just get some examples. I'm just wondering whether I've got that. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I've got my... Now, you notice it's not working now. No, it's not, oh, not, okay. Yeah, yeah, see? So anything that's system friendly, but Amos takes over the whole whole thing that yes. just runs. Anyway, so let's go back to Amiga. So we can go Amiga A, it takes me back to here, and if I flip through now, I'm back here again. Right, so that's Amiga software. Now, what I want to do is I want to show you some uh, uh, Amiga video playing, which is, tends to be like DVD resolution. So if I press play on here, and this is an old, uh, you might remember this clip, this is from your Kickstarter. This yeah. is from my yeah. Kickstarter, yeah. And you can see it um, side to side sometimes isn't very smooth, but uh, it, it can play it um, and it's it's not too bad. In fact, funny enough, the Vampire, on the Vampire, to when you play the videos, it's got MMX decoding. So actually, it runs really nice and smooth. Mm. It's actually better for playing Amiga video than this. But what we want to do is this is a hybrid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the basis of hybrid, I'm going to go up to video and I'm going to go to VLC and I've got a video here that won't give you a copyright strike. I promise. <laughs> but this will show you what you can do if you just if you just follow the ethos of the hybrid. Say you wanted to have a break and then go in and and now we can have Big Buck Bunny and we'll leave this for a few seconds. Well, that's silky smooth, that one. Yeah, so this is basically using the Pi for what it's meant for. It's got a 1080p chip. We had some interesting things with the... Um, uh, uh, I might as explain something that's quite useful here. So when you switch to um, Linux, the emulator now says, oh, the Amiga's gone into the background. I'll lower its priority. And so it makes a video for Linux really silky smooth because it's not having to worry about the Amiga. And then when you switch back, it will prioritise the Amiga. But the interesting thing is if I now go down to a smaller screen, I can, you know, if I can get hold of this, gonna give it right in that corner, I can scale this down, and it's still it's still playing the video silky smooth because it's in front, but you see everything's working at the uh, the clock, you see it's ticking away, so everything's still running. But as soon as, so it's, we've got priority levels built into the emulation now, which is in line with WinUE. The big one that everyone will want to do is, even if they it. use no other part of this functionality and they just want it to boot straight into an Amiga like this, mm. it's the web browser, isn't it? It's yes. The, it's the thing that the Amiga yeah. just doesn't have a, we a really, good modern well, web browser. I, I will, I will say that, and, and right, before we do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slow my browser. Yep, so there you go. Right, so we load up. Now, this is, if I go to, you'll probably recognize this if I go to Aminet. So if you want to go to certain non-style sheet based old websites, the, the HTML4 basically, it will work quite happily with your Amiga browsers. But of course, in Amiga browsers, we really suffer with. So, this yes, is, I mean, that's an example of a website made for Amiga users exactly. with those limitations in mind. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Now, the thing of by having a hybrid, if I go in and I can now go to Chrome, it'll take a few seconds to load. Now, it, bear, bear this in mind. Obviously, it's still Raspberry Pi four, so it's your lim obviously limited to the performance of the Raspberry Pi four. Now, if you had this system and it was on an x86, well, it'd be a different story altogether. Sure. But so, we st but we now have this full blown uh, browser. So, uh, for example, if I go to I was going to say put yours in, but all right, generate fifteen hundred plus. You'll notice it will. It may take a little while to load up the um, the YouTube bits, but again, it's it, this is this is. Um, so let me just scroll down. Which way am I going? Because I'm I'm a Mac user now. <laughs> so here's my text. If I scroll down, we can see it's while this loading those YouTube. On. So you can see this is my website, but now we can actually use Starship based. We've got that browser, and and that makes a big difference. If you want to use it. This is not aimed as being your sole machine. 
No. This is meant to be your fun play machine. When I finish working during the day and I turn off my, my Mac, which I do just about everything with virtual machines. Um, but in the event, I will play with this and, you know, I'm experimenting with it and creating this and, you know, talking to Dimitri about that. We've got a problem. Maybe there's a bug. Who knows? Um, but now we've got access to these full blown browsers. And if I scroll up, we've obviously got like YouTube. YouTube. I recognize that. Yeah, that's that. yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so now, of course, uh, I don't know. Well, this will depend, obviously, how, how fast that. Okay. There we go. Uh, the sound. So there's there's new. I think the volume yeah. might be really. Yeah, the volume's very low. That's so that's fine. good. So you can see it will play. It will play and it will play at full screen. So you have access to to YouTube and you obviously know that channel. Um, but it does mean that while you're while you're using the Amiga and you can jump back into a proper browser, you can jump into LibreOffice, you can mm -hmm. use all that. But bulk of the time you just you close that down and then you just carry on. So. Some people say, well, why would I want to do that? I, I don't know. I, I always thought it was quite good fun. Yeah, so, I mean, thank you for the demonstration. I think we get a good feel for what is and isn't possible with that. Um, and, and that is the big question. Who is it for? Why would yeah. you use it? Does that question even need to be answered? Because this isn't something that you've created as a commercial product. No. It's just no. a, a, an example of what you can do with the Pi and something that you might want to put into your yeah. up-and-coming case. Yeah. You might put something completely different in the case, but it's just a thing that we can play with yeah. if we want to. Yeah, so basically, if you want to build, if you buy in this case, you probably want to make it look like an Amiga. If you want it to act like an Amiga, now you can do, you we can do with the, the uh, most people, uh, especially old Amigans, aren't aware just how powerful and how nice you can make their desktop. I know you are, but a lot of people aren't aware you can have a 1080p display with the Amiga. So we can do all of that. Key thing is, that you can start with a £35 Raspberry Pi just to play. And if you enjoy it or you... We've got a lot of people coming back now. They want to be able to de develop using like Amos or they want to develop games because as we speak now, there are a, a, at least a couple of brand new games coming out for Amiga. Mm -hmm. And they're being developed, not necessarily this way, but they're being developed, cross-developed. So Yeah, games like Rygar and is Super Sprint, I think, is being developed I, I at the moment, so, yeah. things like that. Yeah. And you don't want to have the constant fear of developing it on original hardware, yeah. where that hardware might fall over. Um, and you've got the huge speed advantage here. Yeah. One thing I, the modern IDE. Yeah. I think, One thing I will say, my favourite thing, I'm not really a game player, as I've mentioned, but I love demos. And so I have my, I have a great big library of demos here, which I can go into. But I also have a lot of people will, in fact, I will just go into this. If I go into here quickly, there's one in here I particularly like, which most people out there will know. Starstruck is one of the, one of my absolute favorites. Now this may make a little bit of noise, so we'll probably stop this once it gets going. So I don't know how the volumes are going to work out. But obviously this one's this faster than those 60 speeds. So if you actually want to go through and just look at your demos or you're creating demos, mm. you know, it's just all I'm saying is it's a nice potential option for you. It's um, always nice to watch these demos thing. rendered in real time and not on a YouTube video, isn't it? Which is yeah. where you often have to go to actually see them run. Yeah, absolutely. So that's yeah. nice. Now, what's the availability of this software? Can anyone download it? Is it available? Yeah, so um, the I, on my Patreon page, uh, I, and it's public. You don't have to be a Patreon to download the instructions on how to do this. Uh, it is aimed, the instructions are aimed at people who are happy with the terminal. Right. There's a lot of commands to type in. It takes it takes probably 15 minutes to set this up. Set so up. this is all explained in on your Patreon page, but yeah. you don't need to be a patron to see no, those instructions. No, it's I've just where you've hosted everyone, the information. Yeah. And you very kindly let me keep hold of this one. Yeah. So I can have a play with this. No doubt you'll see more of this on the channel in the future as I get more familiar with it. Maybe we'll stream it on one of my upcoming live streams yeah. and uh, we'll put it through its paces. So thank you for that, Stephen. Right. Um, I'm excited for you. Um, it's great to see you. You know, you haven't run off into the sunset after the success of the first case oh, with a Ferrari. suitcase full of cash. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're giving back more and more to the Amiga yeah. community uh, and the wider community. You don't have to put an Amiga in that new case that you've no, created. Not at all, just um, it. It's nice to have all of these options. So thank you yeah. for the work that you do. No, and uh, do keep us updated on, on your okay. progress with it. And thanks so much. And again, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> I can't wait for my book to arrive. <laughs> Why don't you put on uh, another demo to see us out today? Yeah, sure. Okay. And pick one. Um, let's go have our Nexus 7.
If you've enjoyed today's video and what I do here in general, then consider heading over to patreon.com forward slash retro man cave, where a small contribution will give you access to all videos one week early without any adverts, but most importantly, you'll become an official cave dweller. I hope to see you there and thank you.